Stop throwing me, bitch. Okay, there's one. Point up! Is this the one where you actually, like, upgrade your character's different hits and stuff? I mean, it's King of Fighters 99. I don't expect miracles. Let's, let's do Mai first. I know Mai has one annoying one where it's like, jump. It's like, jump, back, roll forward, punch. See this real quick. Oh shit, I'm out of the box. Sorry, I can't do anything while I'm not clicked on it. Where's my share noise secret? Yeah, I figured I was gonna lose. Ah, there's one. Boobs are much smaller than they are in the right in the later ones. In the PS2 and PS3 versions, her boobs are much larger. No, PS2. Right? No, there's a King of Fighters later. Also, 98, Leona's a boss. She has like a hook punch that's almost unavoidable. She's also much hotter in later ones. She kind of looks like a like a dude with a wig on. Oh, I did a super. Damn. 
I'll just keep low kicking you because you have like no health left. I can't believe I actually got off a super. I don't even know how I did it, but. You are a block Nazi. I'm just gonna block everything you have because I'm a dick. But that's always what 2D fighters end up in. I like how there's not even like an end victory, it's just like loading. Now loading. Point down? What the fuck? I guess because I lost one round? I don't know. That's strange on so many levels. I figured she was going to choose Mai. Now this Mai is probably going to crush me or just like spam fans nonstop. Whenever the computer plays Mai in any of the King of Fighters, it's inevitable that they'll fan spam. Okay, there's that one. Timer, really? Ah, oh, bitch. I figured she was going to do something. spicy. Come on, why aren't you doing it? Yeah, really. I mean, you'd think. Alright. Well, I think we've seen enough of King of Fighters. 
because I'm already getting bored because the combat is not all that thrilling. Unless this is like the end of the story or this is the last boss, and if it's the last boss, I'll just take it. No, it's not. Alright, we've seen enough. Uh, King of Fighters is just like any of the King of Fighters games until the 3D one, which was actually really good. Um, are all just kind of eh. Because 2D Fighters... Uh, 2D Fighters, I think, have had their, their time to shine. I think they're pretty much done, and they should be done. Like, Mortal Kombat still does it pretty well. And... I guess the new Street Fighters, but Street Fighter fundamentally hasn't really changed anything in years, so it's really not that big. So, I mean, it's just a meh game. Like, if you really like King of Fighters, hey, there's your game. If you're whatever, it doesn't matter. So. That's weird. Oh yeah, I mean, that's the one thing that's weird about current systems, is that there aren't expansions added to them. Like, PS2, I think, was the last truly expandable system. I mean, Xbox 360, eh, the, the hard drive peripheral is kind of meh, but, like, the hard drive for the PS2 and the network adapter and, like, all the other stuff you could add to a PS2, I think it was the last time they ever did systems that were prepared in case there was an upgrade required. Like, yeah, you could upgrade your Xbox and stuff, but it wasn't, like, official upgrades. And, like, PS3 didn't have any upgrade things you could do. They had some overpriced network adapter, but that was external. But internally, I mean, it would make sense to have, like, something that you could pull out of the system and replace, even if it was, like, 100 bucks to, like, replace the RAM on your system or replace the hard drive or something like that. Like, replace something in the system. But I think nowadays, I think systems are so throwaway and don't last long enough for them to like really put expansion ports and things. Like the Genesis had so many unused ports, which was like so weird that like the original Sega Genesis had all these like, adapters on it to do different things, and they used them, yeah. But it's still like weird that like they thought about that ahead of time. Like, I think even the SNES has, like, an underplate that you can pull off on older models where you can, where it was meant to hook something into it, but they never did anything with it. Yeah, I mean, I think it'd be awesome if I could pull out my PlayStation 4 hard drive and put a bigger one in there or something, or, like, yeah. Yeah. Like, even PlayStation 1 had... Like a dev port and then some other stuff that you could mod on the system. I mean, Saturn had a lot of weird stuff, but so did PlayStation 1 in terms of like bizarre extra stuff. Yeah, but I mean, N64 had that cart and it was only usable for like, what, three, four games? It was like Star Fox, Donkey Kong Country, and some other game used it, but it was like, it didn't improve it that much, it just unlocked features more than anything else. And what makes it worse is, is at GameStop, when people traded in N64, sometimes they had the cart, and sometimes they didn't have the cart, and we would receive systems that didn't have either cart in them, and they're basically like bricks. You can't do anything with them. Like, without that piece, the game is or the system is, like, fundamentally problemed. Alright, well, I'm gonna go grab a monster real quick, and then we'll figure out what we'll play next, which will probably be the last game that I'm going to play today. So, we'll see.
know it was Donkey Kong that required it. I'm pretty sure it was Star Fox as well. I just know Donkey Kong did because we had some kid, like, cry because he wanted to play it. Ugh, Perfect Dark. <laughs> I will never understand why anybody liked Perfect Dark. That game was ugly, antiquated, played like garbage, and was not fun. But people loved it because that was it. Okay, Majora's Mask. I get it with Majora's Mask. I mean, Majora's Mask is a pretty, fairly big game. But, I don't know. That's like uh, the RAM cart for the Sega Genesis for Cry stuff. Really? I thought it was Star Fox. No, yeah, Star Fox came out way earlier. I don't remember it from Majora's Mask, but... Yeah. See, I played Ocarina of Time, like, after the fact, after everyone was, like, insane about it, and I played it, and I was really disappointed, because everyone made it seem like the world's most epic, great adventure. And I was like, yeah, I've already played better on the PlayStation. <sighs> Even for the time, it wasn't that great, compared to other things. But... Oh, yeah. But Majora's Mask had like a theme and a way of going about things that made it interesting. Ocarina of Time was really bland. It was just like, run around and do this. Pick up more chickens. Shoot Poe's from a horseback after you've gone around and collect all the innocuous bottles all around the fucking world. I just like that Majora's Mask was creepy and weird. It was something different instead of the typical save the princess stuff. It was like, oh yeah, by the way, save the world. Princess is optional. But alright, I'm just going to random a game and see what I get. Because you've picked a lot today, Nicodem. And this is what we'll play. I don't know. I mean, most N64 games, I either played at friends' houses, or I played, like, after the fact. Like, after they were like, oh my god, it's the greatest game ever. And I had already, like, I was so busy with how many games I had on PlayStation 1 that it was like, eh. I don't want to get another console and play games that look ugly, comparatively. Oh, Medal of Honor. DreamWorks. I don't remember DreamWorks working on Medal of Honor. That's just weird. That was weird. Human civilization has always known conflict. But it wasn't until the 20th century that the scope magnified to such a bloody scale as to engulf the entire world. In the aftermath of the war to end all wars, Adolf Hitler and his Nazi party fanned the flames of a broken and dispirited nation. 
rebuilding the country from the ashes of the Versailles Treaty into a fascist juggernaut seemed unstoppable. Fascist. They pushed all the way to the Atlantic in their blitzkrieg with England, their next target. But Winston Churchill, a small island nation, won the Battle of Britain, holding out through Hitler's terror bombing for an entire Dude. year. Dude, Britain only won because of luck. To stay alive and save the world. After Pearl Harbor, the United States, with all its military and industrial muscle, entered the war. First Africa, then Italy, and then finally Fortress Europe itself. You, soldier, are a part of this great crusade. Are you ready to rise above and beyond the call of duty? Ironic, really, that the first Medal of Honor uh, says Call of Duty. Oh yeah, I mean, there's some games on N64 that held up well, but there are a lot of them that are awful. Good morning, Lieutenant. I'm Colonel Hargrove from the Alpha. I don't care. I remember playing a demo for this a long time ago. Medal of Honor used to be like the top echelon of games. Yeah, and this is the game Strafe, Look Up, Look Down, and I think there's a way to change it. Maybe not. Alright, hold on. I need to do this. I need to... The second, I remember trying to play this at first, and they didn't use this control scheme. They used a different one. Okay, I thought the game froze. But, this game actually used, uh... Where is it? <sighs> Controller. Used, uh, special dual analog. I believe. I thought you could change it. Here's this. There we go. Yes. This was the way the demo came um, on an old PlayStation Underground disc that I had. Um, and this, I was so irritated at, but I kept playing it, and now almost every shooter does it. But, yeah. Let's see. Oh, I thought fire was on the second joystick. Let's go for four. But I remember it, and it bothered me. And I remember it was Medal of Honor. But it was honestly the best. Good morning, Lieutenant. Yeah, don't care. Moving on. And it actually, like, Medal of Honor 1 and 2, I think, played really smoothly compared to other first-person shooters on console. So it really was like... For me, it was a, finally a control... And I tried to play another game, and I just could not play it. Get the hell out of here, bitch. You got nothing. I just remember being like super annoyed at it and getting better at it and then I was like, oh, holy shit, it's a whole new world. No, come on.
Also regenerating health, I believe, in this game. Granada. Oh yeah, that's free look. Which was interesting. Okay, that's change weapon. I need to know that. Okay, I thought one of these could be opened. No, I want to use it. I want to take it with me. Oh shit! Face shot. Get the hell out of here, you're dead. Whoa. Rude. But as far as games went, I mean, this wasn't the worst. Oh, yeah. I mean, even this was, like, ahead of its time. And also, if you're careful, which this analog stick is nowhere near as smooth as a PlayStation analog stick. But you can aim pretty efficiently. Although in the demo I kept dying to the tank because there was a bug. I know there's a tank coming up here and it's just like, the tank just kills you dead. What are you doing, dude? What are you doing? Can't say the AI was bright back then, but still. The only thing that's weird, there's no rectical. I mean, really at an era where, you know, first-person shooters were still pretty primitive on consoles. I mean, this really was, like, crazy advanced for the time. Also, considering that it it controlled smoothly. That was probably the biggest thing. Nice leopard armor. Oh yeah. I mean it It's one of those things where people finally realize that consoles could have decent shooters. And a lot of people attribute Bond, but no. I wonder which was first, Medal of Honor or Bond. Because Bond was what, like, 2001? 2002? Maybe I'm thinking Perfect Dark for that. Bond was pretty late in the game, though. Because I remember Quake 2 was already out for PS1. And had been out. I want to use the turret gun.
to freeze. I think it froze. Nope. Nope, end of mission. It's Medal of Honor. What do you, what do you expect? I mean, I will save it. Uh That's pretty shitty that you can overwrite other your other blocks. Castlevania don't know what that is. Mega Man. Mega Man, I could probably just overwrite. Don't know what that is. That's King of Fighters. Alright. But I'm probably going to consider this the end. I mean... Great game. Like, I didn't like World War II era shooter games. I usually don't. But Medal of Honor was one of those few ones, which I will give that an acorn. Because I remember when it came out, I was like, holy shit, this is actually really good looking. Yeah, I know that. But it's kind of dick that it just came up with that. and was just like, oh, do you want to delete this? And also, I mean, no matter what you, what anyone says, you have to give Medal of Honor credit because it created the whole Call of Duty thing. I mean, without the multi-million dollar Call of Duty industry, video gaming would have suffered quite a blow. I mean, it moved, that kind of thing moved gaming from casual to, you know, or from only hardcore to casual, which is fine, but... I mean, a lot of people think the world would be better without it, but ah, I just think that uh, in general it was a, a big step. Let me see this thing. I, I have to see this. Let's see, when was the first Medal of Honor released? October 31st, 1999. So for 1999, running on a PlayStation and running that smooth with controls that smooth was a big deal. Okay, so Bond was 97. And then, let's see. Yeah, Quake 2 is 1997. And let's see, when was the other one? Let's see. Yeah, the god awful N64 port. 1999. Okay. Well, I thought it was... Oh, probably because I was playing Quake 2 on PC before. I just thought it was on PlayStation 1. But... Because I know... That Bond was pretty early. But... I don't know. It was never my thing. I think it's ugly. And the control is goddamn awful. But I hate the N64 controller, so that's always been a thing for me. Oh, yeah, get a nice stretch in. Mm, I gotta drive for like an hour. Oh, God, I'm not excited for it. Well, actually, it's not an hour. I'm just gonna have to drive around for a while. So, yeah, we covered a decent amount of games today. It, this list is gonna get crazy after a little while. But, yeah. Still 
This was all really bad. I mean, seriously, Delta Force? Might and Magic is cute. That's about it. And I do really want this. I want to play Cartia because it looks interesting. It just... Apparently it just has issues. So, I don't know. King, King's Ladies Adventure I'll, I'll pass forever on. And uh, I tried some stuff with Space Griffin. And Space Griffin just does not work properly in recording. You have to... I have to use, like, fraps or something, which... Eh. I mean, I could try Shadow Play, but I hate using Shadow Play so much. And then I'll talk to my wife about Legend of Mana tonight and see what we're gonna do. Because I might just do, like, a Saturday stream of us playing Legend of Mana. But we'll see. Either way, thank you for, wa for watching. Thanks for stopping by. And I will see you tomorrow when I play Witcher. Uh, continue on the death march. But, yeah. Oh, while I'm at it, real quick. Uh, so, yeah, GBA list. 281 left. Yeah, that's what I'd have to do. I'd have to loop it in order to do it. Which is kind of a pain in the ass, but I'll I'll figure out something. I could always uh, see if I could use uh, like a. I oh know my PS2 is broken. I was gonna say I could install it on my hard drive and do the dummy disc and play it as a PS1 game on PS2, but that won't work because. Uh, my PS2 doesn't work, and it, so it won't take the disc. Woohoo! Um, I don't know. I'll figure out something. It's just the the problem that all the heads up things don't load properly. I might look and look for updated plugins in case there's updated plugins for it. Just as long as I don't have to use OpenGL um, or use my graphics card to do it. But we'll see. And I will see you tomorrow or Thursday for Nintendo. Game Boy Advance, Roulette, whichever. But, see you later.